My name is Sid Abruzzi, um, primarily known as uh, Running Water Brothers, surf and skate and since the 70s and also played uh, in bands around here for almost 10 years or more, starting with two runs in the late 70s and then another run um, 2002 to almost 2010. This Big World was our own band we played. We played, uh, we started playing down the point and a half actually, down uh, where Atlantic Beach Club is. That was sort of like a really gritty bar that uh, we, of Water Brothers in the parking lot and anybody could jam there at all times. It was a really cool place. And then um, we did one gig there and then we moved right up to Harpo's. And that was sort of like the venue to play. From there we expanded into playing Providence and, and Boston and stuff like that. And it didn't matter who you were back in the late 70s and the early 80s, but we we're very fortunate um, because Actually, you know, one, it takes one guy to like you, and uh, we've opened up two or three times for Iggy Pop, opened up for Johnny Thunders, Wayne Kramer, Gang Moore, Joan Jett. So, I mean, we've got good opening act shows in, uh, in, in, in Providence primarily, and uh, Pawtucket and Boston, and then we basically did our headline shows in Newport. I mean, we played back in the day, we're on the Living Room album, we played the Living Room a lot, Lupo's a lot. A lot of the, those f were friends of ours, like the guys from Rash of Stabbings were cool. Um, we never played with the neighborhoods, but they were nice guys. Um, going on in the 80s when we weren't playing, there was a lot of bands that were all good friends of ours, but in the 70s it was those guys, and then in 202, um, it just varied to a bunch of acts. And growing up, we always liked like metal to punk, so like, you know, anybody from Iggy Pop right to uh, metal bands, underground English metal bands were always our favorites. There was a lot of energy going into punk shows back then, like a lot of energy. They were, they were like, we'd go up and see the Ramones. Actually, I was involved in bringing the Ramones and the Dictators to Newport for the first time. I had them play right up here. A friend of mine owned a club in 76. Um, and he came and he asked me, you know, like, hey, we want to do some bands up here. And it's right where the, uh, where Sully's, right where that yoga place is. So the Ramones just had one album out. So I had them get in touch with the Ramones and they played three nights here. I followed them up to, to Boston the next night and I took the first film of the Ramones ever playing in, in, in Massachusetts and I still have that film. I sold it to Sony. And then I did the same thing with the Dictators. They played there. And then we did the same thing with the New York Dolls. And the New York Dolls ended up playing at the Hotel Viking. So we brought those three bands to Newport in the 70s, the Dolls, the Dictators, and the Ramones. Because back then clubs weren't used to bands coming in for one night. So the Ramones had to stick around for two nights. So imagine just having the Ramones playing two sets for two nights. That was that's a pretty good party. And then the same thing with the Dictators. And uh, those are like some of the best shows I've actually seen in Newport. We also had Aerosmith play right at the Hotel Viking. You know, we involved in that. Um, Twisted Sister played right down the street at the Electric Elephant, which is the Newport Hotel. So all those shows are pretty cool. So there was a lot of good music that came to Newport. Plus I'm old enough or I saw Led Zeppelin and you know, 10 years after and Jethro Tull and all those bands right down at Festival Field all in one night. I think it's the only thing that, that is really has a scene to it. You know, that people live and live and die by it. They love it. They, you know, it changes their lives. It, it's something that is created by people. It's not, sitting there and being in a cover band situation bar and not really caring or giving a shit what's going on around you. Original music is definitely where it's at and for Newport to, to 
sort of always have a scene, but unfortunately with Newport, it's a scene that will be strong for five years and then be flat for two or three years. So Newport needs a, a steady, consistent scene. But which it seems to be doing at places like Jimmy's. Man, it just takes a crowd. That's all it takes, you know. Just get the word out, get energy for it, and create a venue that you want to make, to make people come, you know what I mean? If you got to add something to it to make more people see your band, do it. And, um, you know, just keep doing it and, you know, hopefully we'll get the crowds. Pretty cool about this project and um, hope it does it. inspire bands with all the interviews and um, seeing that stuff is done like this. The stuff was done like this in the, in the 70s because that's what we were creating a scene for. So for you guys to create a scene to make it happen is what it takes.